Continuing with topic two of paper nine, we're now looking at 4.5 option trading strategies. Now, there are many, many option trading strategies. Indeed, in section five, we'll be looking at many. Um, here, we're just considering uh, the buying and selling of calls, puts, and futures to come up with synthetic positions. But before uh, looking at that, as noted at the top of page 2.24, following on from the hedging strategy that we did in the previous section, should be noted that the fund manager uh, who bought puts could also have made money by selling calls because the price fell. So we, could, we see we could combine the two, buying puts and selling calls. Uh, now we're told if we sold calls and bought puts at the same strike price, fund managers effectively shorting the Hang Seng index. If prices fall, profit is made. If prices rise, a loss is made. Now, uh, that leads on to put call parity and futures and options combined strategies. I'm going to run through this very, very quickly. Um, there could be a question on it. It's a case of just memorizing the combinations, but I'm going to take it no further because it is. It, 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 we're going down one, uh, one avenue and, and we won't go any further. So put call parity, fundamental concept, understanding options and their ability to create synthetic positions. A synthetic position uh, is, is a position that you're not actually buying or selling uh, you're doing it through calls, puts, and futures, and uh, arriving at uh, a, 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 the the equivalent position. Uh, let me show you. A long put, you're buying a put, and a short call, you're selling a call, is the same as shorting the underlying asset. So long put, short call, synthetic short underlying. Long call, short put, synthetic long underlying. How on earth am I going to remember this? Well, I'm buying a put, I'm buying the right to sell. So it's a short position. And then long call, I'm buying the right to buy. So it's a long position. We then combine futures and options with the strategies. And we've got some notes on there. And then we're laying out the six positions, transaction one, transaction two, arriving at the synthetic instrument. So please be aware of those positions, do some questions in them, but I, I'm not gonna spend much time on them. It, we, we take that material no further. However, we will look in a bit more detail at option pricing models. Now there's two main models we're going to consider, the Black Shoals Merton model uh, for calculating the price of European options, European style options. Uh, it, it is not designed for American style options. American style options are more suited to the binomial model. And we'll look at the binomial model a little later. We start off with the Black Shoals Merton model. It was uh, developed in the early 1970s. It's been a significant development in the pricing of financial in instruments. Now, the Black Shoals model recognizes that there are five variables in arriving at an option price. The price of the underlying asset, the stock price, the time to expiry, the exercise price, annualized volatility of the underlying asset, and the risk-free rate of interest. Now, we were introduced to these earlier and we're going to do a lot more work on them now. Now, the, the black Scholes Merton model, there it is. Call option price is equal to the current stock price uh, with a cumulative normal probability of D1 applied to it minus the present value of the exercise price with the cumulative normal probability of D2 applied to it. And then we're given uh, the individual items and how they're calculated. Now, you're not going to have to deal with the detailed calculation at paper nine, but be aware of the inputs to the Black Scholes Martin model. That's the important point. Now, on page 2.26, uh, we're alerted to the effect of the variables in the Black Shoals Merton model. And we, we've seen this earlier, um, the effect of, of the different elements. So the effect of the spot price, well, the higher the spot price, the higher the value of a call option, the lower the value of a put option. Effect of time to expiry, well, with American style options, the longer the time to expiry, higher the value of the option. And that's for both call and put. It's 
slightly different, a little bit more complex for European style options. And we, we don't have to worry about that. With the exercise price, higher the exercise price, then the, the less in the money a call option will be. And it's the opposite for the put option. Annualized volatility of the underlying assets. Now, if the volatility stock price, it moves around uh, a great deal. Probability of a call option increasing value is higher because there's more chance of it going in the money. Probability of put option increases uh, in value is higher. Uh, the, the probability, rather, uh, put option increase in value is higher. Uh, just the same as the call because the price is moving around. And so both the value of call and put options increases as the volatility of underlying asset increases. And we're told at the bottom there's two measures of volatility, historical volatility, and that is actually observed by looking at past price movements. Implied volatility is where you put all the inputs to the Black-Scholes model, including the current option price, you work backwards and you work out what the volatility of the underlying stock price is implied to be by the pricing of the option in the market. And then the interest rate, I've covered this earlier. If, you, if interest rates increase, call options are attractive because instead of buying the stock, you buy a, a call option, the right to buy the particular price and you put the remaining money on deposit and you earn interest. Uh, the other way around, if interest rates go up, uh, then put options come down in value because the, the, they're not as attractive uh, because you sell the stock now and put it on deposit. That is the way to think about it. So call options increase in price when interest rates rise, put options fall in price when interest rates rise and the other way around, the flip side also applies. Now, risk measurement for options. Um, how do we work out how risky the option price is, or rather the sensitivity of the option price to certain variables? And these variables we've just considered. Well, the measure of how much option prices will move for a change in the underlying uh, variables is, is now covered. The first one is delta. Delta of option measures sensitivity of the price to change in the price of the underlying stock. And how we calculate dollar change in option price divided by dollar change in the underlying stock price. So if the stock price moves, does the, does the option price move a lot or a little? Now we're told here the delta value of a long call, a short put is always between zero and one. It's always positive. Uh, that is because if the underlying stock price goes up, then the call price will go up. They're positively correlated. That's why the delta is zero to one. However, a long put, a short call, it's the opposite way around. So if the price goes up, then the value of a put comes down. They're negatively correlated. And that is why the delta value is between minus one and zero. It's negative. So what is the delta value summary? Long call, short put in the table uh, at the money is 0.5 in the money up to one, out of the money down to zero. So out of the money, zero to 0 0.5, and then in the money, 0 0.5 to one. And then it's the other way around for the long put short call. In the money, you're down to minus one, uh, at the money, minus 0 0.5, and out the money, up to zero between minus 0 0.5 and zero. Just find some way of remembering those relationships. Uh, there is a chance that uh, the concept of the delta could be examined. And we give you a delta hedging example. I'll, it's unlikely that will be examined, but it shows the application of delta. Uh, read through that example to appreciate how it is used in practice. Gamma. Now, gamma measures the rate of change in the option delta. So that's measuring how much the delta will change by for a change in the underlying stock price. Now, this is important from the point of view of rebalancing portfolios. As I said, gamma represents the sensitivity of delta to underlying stock price. If gamma is low, delta changes slowly and little adjustments required to keep delta portfolio at the required level. If gamma is large, delta very uh, sensitive to changes 
an underlying stock price, frequent changes will be required to maintain a portfolio delta. That means you've got to be buying and selling uh, stocks to maintain the delta as you would like it. Vega, the way to remember these is by the first letter. So V for Vega, V for volatility. So Vega measures the change in option price for a 1% change in volatility of the underlying stock price. So there it's the dollar change in option price divided by 1% change in volatility of the underlying stock price. Um, the actual calculations may be the examin. It's more likely they'll be asking you what does Vega uh, measure. It measures uh, sensitivity of the option price with regard to uh, the volatility of the underlying stock. Theta starts with T, remember time. So it measures effective passage of time, the option price. Uh, theta will always be negative as option values will decrease as time passes. And rho begins with R. R is the risk-free rate of interest uh, and it measures rate of change in the value of an option with respect to changes in the risk-free interest rate. So I would be aware of the, um, the different uh, categories that we would call them the Greeks. Uh, do I, will I have to do the calculations? Highly unlikely. It's more likely uh, that you'll be examined on what, what do they represent. And finally, under 4.6.4, the binomial option pricing model. So this is the second model. It was proposed in the late 70s. It's more of a computational procedure than a formula. So you, you need a bit of uh, computer processing power. Uh, Excel spreadsheets are, 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 can do the, the job. Major advantage, it can handle American style options and, and American style options are, are, are traded options. So uh, very, very viable. Inputs the binomial model, similar to the Black-Scholes. Price the underlying stock, exercise price, risk-free rate. But now we have up factor, down factor, a number of binomial periods that reflects price volatility. So you can actually select by how much you think the underlying price will increase or decrease by over time. And we're told that's most useful in volume options that are complex in structure. Um, be aware that two methods of volume options, Black-Scholes merit model and the binomial option pricing model. Classic question B, which of the following um, will calculate the price of options and one, two, three, four. You're looking for those two pricing techniques.